Is anybody out here ready for revival? Let's go! Yeah. I see revival, I see fire, I see a glory burning fire. This and a lot of days, spirit is moving. In this generation, I see fire.
Is anybody out here ready for revival?
Is anybody out here ready for revival? I see a glowing, burning fire. This sun, a lot of days, spirit is moving. In this generation, I see fire.
Is anybody out here ready for revival? I see fire, I see a glowing, burning fire. This sun, a lot of things, spirit is moving. In this generation, I see fire.
Is anybody out here ready for revival? I see a glowing, burning fire. This and a lot of days, spirit is moving. In this generation, I see fire.
Is anybody out here ready for revival? I see a glowing, burning fire. This sun, a lot of days, spirit is moving. In this generation, I see fire.
Is anybody out here ready for revival? I see a glowing, burning fire. This are the Lord of days, spirit is moving. In this generation, I see fire.
Is anybody out here ready for revival? I see a glowing, burning fire. This are the lot of things, spirit. In this generation, I see fire. November 2020, Ministry Pastor E.A. Adeboe, General Overseer, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and other anointed men of God. This two-day event shall be virtually transmitted live, 7 p.m. daily on Dove Television, RTN, RCCG Radio, Redeemers Network, Oak, Lifeway Radio, AIT, and through all other... God bless you.
the church and society from time immemorial had a link. There was an unwritten social contract between the church and the people. That's why the Bible records for us that when God's children were in the desert and starving and complaining, manna came from heaven. It wasn't the government of the day that provided it, it was God. And the representative of God here on earth is the church. So there had always been that onus for the church to be involved socially with society. As God's children being the church, it is our duty to go into society. And the church being the light must go into the world to shed light. Now, the light comes in the form of the gospel, which is the word. But people really don't care about the word until they know how much you care about them. By the time you have done all of this, as the elders say, whoever wants to step on wet ground needs to pour water ahead. By the time you've done all this, it is easier for the gospel to be accepted and taken upon. So it is the role of the church to partner with the political so that as politicians are forming policies, they are guided by the church so that the policies that have been formulated are beneficial to the society at large. The first thing is that we must be deliberate about it. Number two is that the society must be willing to work with the church. Now, when the church is deliberate about this, we must now come together and say, okay, whatever program we're doing, let's see if we can work with the government. So the church needs to sit down in the area of academics with the Minister of Education, in the area of health with the Minister of Health. You have the resources, we have the people. You have the land, we have the mindset. Let's put heads together and work together. And I believe we'll be able to make a much more impact than we're doing right now. But we, the young adults and youths, we've decided to focus on certain things that pertains to our generation. For example, one of it is what is called, we call Kingdom Hackathon, which deals with the technological space where we bring young technological minds together, where they come up with, you know, programs and apps and solutions to real life problems for young adults and youth. That's one of them. This is the second edition of this program. Giving them this platform is part of the things we are doing from a church point of view in encouraging them. And of course, the price money they're going to get is also from church. And uh, it's not going to be the last. Another program that we'll come up with is the agenda, which deals with the political aspects of young adults and youth and how we can be involved in changing the narrative. The incubator is a special aspect of training, coding, preparing our young adults and youth, our teenagers, our young children for the technological space. Because technology, the way it is going, will continue to be tilted towards the use of the Antichrist if we're not careful. So in order for us to counter that, we must get into that space. And that's what incubator provides. It provides training, cooking, proper preparation to enter into the technological space as children of the most High. So here at the Incubator Nigeria, we are focused on upskilling revolution to ensure that we prepare the next generation for the revolution that are taking place. In view of that, we train people in mobile applications and web development. We train people in artificial intelligence. We train people in digital marketing, graphics design, video editing, and lots more. Another program that we do is called RISE, Redeemed Initiative for Skills and Empowerment, where we bring your dance and youth together who have skills, who don't have anything to do, and we train them in different disciplines, project management, photography, video editing, cake baking, decorating, sewing, etc., etc., fish farming, to equip our young adults and youth. Because you will see now in this day and age, your certificates more or less don't mean anything. You graduate, you have the certificate, there's no job. So you need to start creating jobs in this day and age. And that's what RISE does. We have another program called REACH, where we go into inner lands, areas that are very rural. And we camp there and we have a program with them for the whole weekend. We have medical treatments. We build schools, we build a church. Whatever can be done to help that society come to life. We do it. So whenever we do anything as a church, as a mission, 
an, a religious body it is to spread the good news. It is to share Jesus. We apologize for the poor audio. I want to also welcome you once again to the November 2020 Holy Communion service of the Redeemed Christian Church of God with a theme, Let There Be Light for 10, Sub Theme, Dream Again. Leading us to the Lord's table tonight is our Father in the Lord, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Sir Enoch Adejare Adeboye. Please get your communion elements ready, even as a sub with our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll go on another documentary break from the Redeemed Christian Church of God and Youth Mission. And of course, when we come back, our session coordinator, Dickness Titi Lokwe Adeboye, will be standing by. Stay tuned. I heard so much about the redeemed Christian Church of God since I was born. Redeemed that is you. Redeemed that is you. <laughs> Just like that, I was already a teenager before I ever got to know that this redeemed is actually a church. The year was 1952. Reverend Josiah Akindayomi started a small Christian group. They met frequently at a house on Willoughby Street, a Bute Meta. The group was first called the Glory of God Fellowship. What started as a group of just nine members soon began to grow exponentially. The report of many miraculous signs and wonders brought many people to see this Christ Jesus that Pa Akindayomi is preaching about. Pa Akindayomi set his mind to believe the word of God in totality and signs just as the word of God said. After a clear revelation from God, Reverend Josiah changed the name of the group to the redeemed Christian Church of God. But the revelation was more than just a name, it was a covenant. God told Reverend Josiah that this church would spread around the earth and that the church would endure till the glorious return of the Lord Jesus Christ. That kind of vision can only manifest when God sees people who are really faithful and committed. It's a vision bigger than one man. You know it's beyond you. So you're not looking to be a powerhouse or anything. You just want to be obedient and let God work His works through you. The vision for RCCG is clearly beyond one man. God had laid out the plan for RCCG to get to the ends of the earth and the journey would flow through faithful people. As Reverend Josiah Akindayomi prepared to meet the Lord, he committed the vision into the hands of another faithful man. His name? Enoch Adejare Adeboye. Let somebody shout hallelujah. 
the spread of the gospel through the redeemed Christian Church of God has been phenomenal. Every member is taking the gospel out there. The RCCG has brought the gospel to the streets of Nigeria, making it accessible to every person. Through evangelism and church planting, it has also spread to countries of the world. This is not a competitive church. It is growing because the word is powerful and it prevails. You will see it too that RCCG is a unifying force for Christianity. That is why Lekki 98 was so successful. CNN projected that over 7 million people were in attendance. And RCCG's rise has been monumental ever since. People from every denomination, every walk of life, everywhere just gathering to worship Jesus. That is the beauty of the gospel. Nothing can stop a church that is on a mission to spread the gospel. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. RCCG is on a mission to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Millions have been reached, yet there are still over 5,000 people groups that have never heard of the gospel. The work is not yet done. And therefore, this is a call to you. As we have already seen proof that the gospel cannot be stopped, regardless of the time, regardless of the age, regardless of the technology in place, in whatever you do, whatever space you find yourself, whatever sphere you find yourself, that you surrender to the will of God, that you continue to surrender, that He may be able to use you to bring about the fulfillment as the gospel of the Lord fills the entire earth. God bless you. For some people, uh, we have arrived. I will tell you when we arrive. When we have an auditorium the size of Ibadan, then we will be beginning. Welcome back from that short documentary by the Redeemed Christian Church of God and Youth Mission. With me in the studio is Dickness Titi Lokwe Adeboye, our session coordinator. How are you doing today? I'm fine, Sabrina. Thank you so much. Thank you. What an awesome time to be in the presence of the Lord. I am so excited to be here today. And I want to welcome you to the Holy Communion service of the Redeemed Christian Church of God in November. You're welcome. We love you. Thank you for stu staying in and tuning in this night. Now, um, when we consider what it is to dream, to dream is, especially when it's a dream from God, it is something amazing, something wonderful. Mm. Um, and I just, I don't know what the report of man has been about your life. I don't know what unpleasant circumstances surround you, whether you have men have called you barren god is saying dream again because you'll be fruitful whether you have been hopeless so to say men have called you hopeless god is giving you a new hope he's saying you should dream again whatever it is whether you've been ill for a while and men have said that that disease is what will take your life god is saying i am healing you so dream again and honestly it is a fantastic topic mm. it's something spot on for this mm. time what mm. do you think sabrina yes I think God re re revealed this to our Father in the Lord. It's just so timely. Mm. Looking at the year, mm -hmm. a lot of people have, have lost uh, um, their hope. Mm. The, 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 the coronavirus mm. came and took most of the year. But we are here again saying to you that you can dream again. Yeah. God is there. There's, there's what they call the 11th hour miracle. And no wonder we are in November. There is nothing God cannot do. He can reverse the irreversible. He can make all things brand new. So it's time for you, just like Sister Titi said, to dream again and bring it to the Lord's table tonight. Because at the Lord's table, there is healing, there is revival, 
there is deliverance. Yes. And no wonder the scripture says that we should remember Jesus when we take the body and the, the blood of Jesus Christ. So I enjoin you to just dream again. Like she said, those dreams that are gone, mm. that you feel in 2020 you can't achieve, mm -hmm. you can still achieve it. Yes, yes. You know when you consider the story of Joseph, all that happened to him in his life, I mean, who would think that he would get to where God wanted him to be? But our God is not a God that will abandon his own. Mm. He's not a God that will give you a dream and then not fulfill it. That is not who God is. If he has said it concerning your life, he will fulfill it. So, again, we are just encouraging you this night to dream again, to keep your hope alive, to keep your trust in God alive, to mm. keep your faith in God alive, because you are going to come out smiling no matter what you think this year has been for you, no matter what you think it has done to you, God is saying, I have not started with you because I have great and mighty plans for your life. Mm. And we are excited this night, right? We're excited this it's, it's going to be a wonderful one. Amen. So please stay tuned. Prepare your um, Holy Communion elements. You can sit with your family. You can sit with your friends. I want you to be expectant this night. Expect what God is going to give to you. Expect the miracle is going to deliver to you as you sit down to eat with us. All right. So let's, let me ask you this question for those people that are yet to understand what it means to dream again. What are the uh, um, areas can we mention the areas that they can dream again oh of course you can dream about your family you can dream again I think I mentioned that earlier it could be uh, about uh, your career maybe you feel like you are not properly launched into where God wants you to be but you know it deep down that something is missing something feels a little off about your life God can give you a new dream mm. and he can revive those dreams that he has given you even about the the things areas of your life so you can dream in your marriage you can dream in your career you can dream in your health you can dream about your emotions for some people their emotions are really you know um not not great so they are trusting god to help them to lift their spirit out of that state of hopelessness that they feel that they are in and god is saying he will do it this night mm. Yes. He will do it again and over and over again. Yes. I also yes. want you to know that when you take the body of Jesus Christ, you're also telling yourself that you trust God to, to push you and plunge you mm -hmm. into those dreams that are gone, that mm -hmm. are forgotten. Mm -hmm. So take heed of this word tonight. Stand firm in the word of Christ. Be, 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 be hopeful. Have faith. Because the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped yes. for. The evidence of things not seen. It's time for you to see those dreams and know that God is able to establish and bring those dreams to pass. Yes. What are you dreaming of? Are you dreaming of a life that is beautiful but has just been cut short? Are you dreaming of a, of a marriage that, that is so heavenly? God will definitely bring it to pass. Whatever he says he will do, that is what he will do. Yes. He's not a man that should lie, mm -hmm. never the son of man that will repent. Whatever he says he, he will, will do, do that is what he will do. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. You. Titi. We'll quickly go on a documentary, but please, can you just pray for us even as we go? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful day. Uh, thank you for reminding us that we can still live those dreams that you have given unto us. Thank you for reviving our hearts. We ask that this day will be a beautiful one. We ask, oh God, that you mm. would energize our spirit. You will revive our minds, our body, our soul as we dine with you in the name of Jesus. Mm. We ask that our lives will never remain the same again. Mm. That our hopes will be revived. Mm. We ask, oh God, that by the end of this day, our, everything that we've been dreaming about, we will begin to see the manifestation of them mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You will shine light into every hidden corners in our lives. Mm -hmm. You will shine light into every hidden hopes of our lives. Mm -hmm. You will shine light into every hidden things that needs to be boosted out in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ancient of days. You, For it's in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. And now we take the short documentary, which will plunge us into the Holy Communion service. Stay tuned.
The work of mission by the grace of God is for every believer. Everyone that is called as a Christian, you are called into a work of mission because every believer is a missionary and every unbeliever is a mission field. So every believer is called into the work of missions. Mission involves several things. It involves going, it involves giving, it also involves praying. So as a believer, by the grace of God, if you are not going, you should be able to give. If you can give, you should be able to pray. So every believer is expected to be doing the work of mission because that was ab initio what Jesus was doing while he was on the surface of the earth. I used to follow Capro into some of their mission activities. Some of the experiences one have had in traveling was the longest one I have done so far engaged in mission was the one I traveled to Guinea Conakry. Now that was by road. I took four days, four nights plus some hours stretch journey from Abuja down to Guinea Conakry. And I saw the faithfulness of God. I mean, in some cases, I had to enjoy, you know, donkey, you know, it was fun. Also, sometimes uh, 2019, immediately after our mission engagement in Kenya, I was coming back down to Nigeria. Immediately I got to Nigeria, I decided to go to an outreach in, uh, what do you call it now, Northeast. It was a very good experience. Like I had an engagement with Hetzman. They arrested us, took virtually everything we had. We were there on the floor while well, they were contemplating on what to do to us. I prayed to God, I said, Lord, if dying, will give you glory, take it. If staying alive will give you glory, take it. It wasn't long. Suddenly, police just appeared from nowhere and there was an exchange or uh, uh, gun battle between the police and the headsmen. It lasted for about 15, 20 minutes. And all of a sudden, the policemen ran away. We were just there between us and them. Brother, you cannot just tell what happened. That guy came again. He said that we should kidnap two or three and go. But one way or the other, the Lord deliver us. The boss came and said to them, Hey, give me your phone, give me your phone. The guy said, what does that got to do with me in Hausa? Suddenly, the next thing we saw was that, you know, the boss just held him like this, like a policeman would arrest somebody. And they were just walking toward the bush path. And that was the last of them that we saw. Is it to tell you about Cameroon? How I have to be on a high sea, on a speedboat for about seven, eight hours. And, you know, it was raining. And all of a sudden, the fuel in the, uh, the speedboat got finished. I just tell the Lord, take control. And suddenly we saw someone from Bakasi, the fuel to us, and we're able to proceed from where we are to where we were going. RCCG has been a blessing to the world for a church to have spread to over 197 nations. Tells you of what RCCG is doing. The places where the devil was, you know, dominating suddenly, immediately we get there, the missionary get there, light shone and everything changed within that site. But for the person who really want to go, who want to be involved directly into mission, number one, let there be a determination in your heart to let the Holy Spirit indeed lead you and then begin to pray to what, what God is laying in your heart to do. And I will just encourage you to do one thing. One, try to visit a mission field. That will help you so that you don't just go in and all of a sudden you're almost trying to back out. I will try to encourage believers, please, to give towards mission work. Please, you can be of help to us. It could be new clothes. It could be fairly used clothes. It could be shoes because some of them don't have these things. You know, it's a, a thing of joy for them. So, beloved brethren, please be of help to us as we reach out to these people. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. Say, you are wonderful. 
The Lord. It is a wonderful praise and worship of art to our Maker to usher in the communion service. It's a wonderful thing to eat at the master table and the serious privilege. 
So I want to exalt the king by thanking him for offering himself to us. Bless the Lord. Thank him for his mercy. If not for his mercy, we may have been consumed. Thank him for the food he has given to us that makes us whole. Thank him for his goodness, his loving kindness. What a mighty God we have. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Alpha, Omega, the beginning and end. The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. He is the one that has given us himself to eat and drink. What a marvelous day. What a wonderful God. What a loving Father. Blessed be thy name. Oh God, we love you. We thank you for a great thing like this. We bless you. We are here again. We are here again. Father, we are here again. Holy Ghost, come and take your place. Amen. We are here again. We are here again. Father, we are here again. Holy Ghost, come and take control. Amen. We are here again. Jesus Christ, we are here again. Father, we are here again. Holy Ghost, come and take control. Amen. Father, we are here again. We are here to dine with you, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. We are here to meet with you at your table. What a wonderful, loving Father you are. We are here because you invited us. And we pray that you accept us and use this meal to show your greatness in our lives. Amen. What a mighty Father, what a loving God. You died and gave us all. We want to thank you for the past home communion services. We want to appreciate you for healings. We want to thank you for deliverances. We want to thank you for salvation. We want to thank you for signs and wonders you have performed through this meal. What a God you are. We want to thank you for those you have used in diverse ways to package this wonderful occasion. Lord, today we are here. We are here for you. And we want to thank you for our beloved daddy, whom you have been using to showcase this occasion. Father, we pray that the words he will speak today, as usual, will not fall to the ground. Amen. You will manifest your glory in his life. You will take him from one strength to another strength. You will exalt his son like that of Horn, Akron, and we are not his head with fresh oil. His power will show forth today. Your power will show through him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you because we are ending the year. And you are God that do, do, you do great things at the last. Father, as we take this meal, Father, use this meal to crown our year with your goodness. And let our path drop with fatness. Give us something that when people see it this year, by this year they will say, oh, what a mighty God we are serving. Oh God, we are yours. And we want to speak to your glory. As we go out after this meal, those that will meet us, let them know that we have taken a meal of the Lord, that we have been with you. By signs and wonders, they will start happening in our lives. Thank you for the Dean Christian Church of God. Thank you for the pastor. Thank you for the minister. Thank you for everyone that has participated in this meal. Father, let us not go empty-handed. Let us receive something from you. Because you are so good, you are so kind. You are, uh, you, you, you are, your mercies cannot be exhausted. Your presence cannot be exhausted. Crown the year for us Amen. with favor. Amen. Crown the year with our children, for our loved ones, that when we remember this day, we will have God to bless your name. Thank you because we are going to eat with you. Father, still every storm in our lives. Amen. Shut up the land's mouth. Amen. Glorify your name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Bless you be the name of God. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. If you agree with me, shout Jesus. 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 Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible reading for this Holy Communion service shall be taken from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23 to the end. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to the end. For I have received of the law 
that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as soft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye see the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not designing the lost body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we will judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chasing of the law, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, carry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Praise the Lord.
free from the bargains of sin. Let us pray. Immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art, immortal, immortal God, invisible God. Immortal God, how great thou art, immortal, immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art, Father, immortal. Invisible, the almighty, the unchangeable God, we worship you. The only one who can give dreams and cause the dreams to pass. The only one who can start and finish, we bless your name. 
We thank you for being with us all this long. Thank you for preserving us, particularly during this year. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord God Almighty, as we gather again together in our various locations to dine with you at your table, we pray, Lord God Almighty, that you will start something new in our lives, that you will give us something that will cause us to begin to dream great again. Amen. Father, show your glory Amen. and let all be well. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Our text this morning, or this evening, rather, will be Mark chapter 14, from verse 22 to 25. Mark chapter 14, from verse 22 to 25. As you know very well, our theme for this month is dream again. The apostles watched as the Lord performed miracles. They saw the lame walking, the blind seeing. They saw lepers being cleansed at his touch. They saw him raising the dead, the one who had just died, the one who is going to be buried, and even the one that had been dead for four days. And they were amazed. And they dreamt of a day when they too could do the same thing. Uh, as a matter of fact, they really, really dreamt that one of these days we too will be doing all that a master is doing. They saw themselves as apprentices. And they tried to find out what is the secret. How is it that he's able to do all these things? And they observed that many a times by the time they woke up, it was gone. It would have gone into one secret place to go and pray. On one occasion, they had to follow him, try to locate where he went to. And they saw him praying there. They said, Master, the crowd that gathered, they are looking for you. It wasn't the crowd, they really came to announce. <laughs> they wanted to find out what is going on in these secret prayer meetings that the Lord was having. So in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, Luke chapter 11, verse 1, they said to him, teach us to pray. Maybe if we can be praying like he is praying, then maybe we too will be performing the miracles that he was performing. And then he taught them to pray. <laughs> and he didn't say anything about performing miracles. And Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh. <laughs> we are dreaming of performing miracles 
You taught us a prayer. He didn't say anything about performing miracles. So, one day they asked him point blank in John chapter 6 from verse 28 to 29. John 6, 28 to 29. Master, Master, how can we do the work of God? How can we do what we are doing? Tell us. And he said, ah, all you need to do is believe on him who he has sent. Hey, uh, okay. We believe in you. Very soon now, in their dreams, they were saying, very soon now we will be performing the miracles, the kind of miracles he is performing. But then came Matthew 17, from verse 14 to 21. Matthew 17, from verse 14 to 21. And, and a man brought his son who was demon-possessed to the apostles and asked them, help me cast out this demon. I've been tormenting my son for a long time. And they tried. Oh, they tried. But nothing happened. Jesus, you know, if you read it from the beginning, from verse 1, went to the Mount of Transfiguration was coming down when the father now ran to him and said, Sir, <laughs> this is my problem. I brought the problem to your disciples. They couldn't do it. And Jesus cast out the demon and the boy was whole. Ah. So they now ask him, secretly now, when they were alone, why couldn't we do it? We wanted to cast out the demon. We want to do what you say. Uh, it's because of your unbelief. Ah, unbelief. Hey, we believe. <laughs> it's just that nothing happened. Nothing happened. Oh, well, this time does not go except with uh, fasting and prayer. Okay, oh, if it is going to involve fasting 40 days and 40 nights, <laughs> it looks as if we better forget. But then, in John chapter 14, verse 12, John 14, verse 12, he said to them, the works that I do, you shall do also. And even greater works than these shall you do. Because I'm going to my father. Ah, and they began to dream again. Okay, now, he's told us the truth. Okay, now, we know that as soon as he goes to his father, our dreams will be fulfilled. But nobody dares ask him, when are you going to your father? <laughs> <laughs> but he kept dreaming quietly. A day is coming and we will do great works. I have good news for those of you who have been dreaming. I believe that from tonight, things will begin to happen in your life. Because finally, the text I read to you came in Mark chapter 14, from verse 22 to 25. Mark 14, 22 to 25. As they were eating, he took bread, broke it, gave to them, do this in remembrance of me, took the wine, drank it, and told them, this is the last time I'm drinking this wine with you. Last time uh, it's going, yes, all right. You know, as you come to the table of the Lord today, your dreams 
of performing miracles, signs, and wonders, we begin to find fulfillment. Amen. All it takes is if we just believe what Jesus said. Because it wasn't long after that one that Jesus appeared to them again and said, now I'm going, but you are going to receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts 1, verse 8. He said, you shall be witnesses unto me. What does that one mean? Who is a witness? A witness is someone who produces proof. When they call a witness in court, it's somebody who will say, either he will say, I was there, or I have proof that what this man is saying is true. What is the proof God is talking about? Miracles, signs, and wonders. Proof that Jesus Christ is alive. Proof that he's still on his throne. Prove that he had performed miracles before and he can do it again and again. And of course, you know the rest of the story. It wasn't long after that in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. Acts 2 from verse 1 to 4. And the Holy Spirit came. Power came upon the disciples and by the time you get to Acts chapter 5, and you read it from verse 12 to 16, Acts 5, 12 to 16, the Bible said, by the hands of the apostles were great miracles, great. They were not recorded for us in details because there, there, there were so many the Bible would not have been able to contain them all. Through these disciples, they dreamt. Initially, it appeared as if their dreams evaporated, but they dreamt again. And their final dreams were fulfilled. My brothers and sisters, when did you stop dreaming? When did you stop dreaming of doing marvelous things for God? Dream again. Don't approach this table tonight as an ordinary, regular, Holy Communion service that we've attended in the past. This time, before you come at all, dream. Dream big. Dream, see yourself raising the dead. Dream, see yourself opening blind eyes, making the lame to walk. Dream, see yourself a mighty vessel in the hand of the almighty God. Because himself, he himself promised greater works than this shall you do. If he said you can do greater works than he did, and his name is the truth. It's not a liar. He's waiting for you to believe him that it can happen. And he just shall live their faith. And so, as we bow our heads in prayer, if there's anyone listening to me, and you too would love to do great works for God, you can only do great works for him if you are one of his. You know, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, that statement that he made that I am divine, my father is the husbandman, I am divine, and you are the branches, will become applicable to you. You become an extension of him. And whatever the vine can do, the branches can do. So if you will surrender your life to him today, he will graft you into himself. You will become a branch of him. And very soon, your dreams of greatness 
will begin to come to pass. So if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I beg you, don't waste any more day of your life. Surrender to him now so that you can become an extension of his hand that when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. And miracle signs and wonders can happen through you. Yes, even as bad as you may think you are now, if you will surrender your life to him, you will become a vessel unto honor in his hand very soon. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, please bow your heads and let me pray with you. Call on him. Ask him to please save your soul. Ask him to forgive your sins. Ask him to become your Lord and Savior. Promise him that you will serve him for the rest of your life. Talk to him, and I will pray with you in a moment. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, the truth, the one who would never lie, the one who said, whosoever will come unto me, I will no wise cast out. I present to you all these people who are surrendering their life to you today. Father, please receive them. Save their souls. Amen. Let your blood wash away their sins. Amen. Write their names in the book of life. Amen. And please give them a brand new beginning. Amen. And Lord God Almighty, as they become believers, when they cry unto you for anything, please answer them by fire. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ today, please contact us as soon as possible so that we can be praying with you. And our brethren, as we approach the table of the Lord, I'm asking you to please start dreaming great. If you begin dreaming great, tonight can mark a new beginning. We want you to enter the year that is approaching an entirely different person, a mighty vessel unto honor in God's hands. Oh, maybe you have dreamt of mighty things before, and it appears as if the dreams have not come to pass. Begin to dream again, and the fulfillment will begin even from tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. May your mighty hands on all this. I bless. To the Jesus of God Almighty. Each one is taking miracles, signs, and wonders. Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the elements here that have been prayed upon. Is just standing as a contact for all the elements all over the world where you are going to partake tonight. And I can assure you, as you partake, the one who can bring dreams to pass will begin to bring your dreams to pass. The Lord Jesus, the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had broken it, He said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you take the bread tonight, just tell the Almighty God that dream of being absolutely healthy. Grant that my dream tonight.
you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now when you drink the wine, your cry to God will be, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let all my dreams, past, present, and future, be totally fulfilled. After the same manner, he took the cup when he has supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as soft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Almighty God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let all my dreams, past, present, and future, be completely fulfilled. Almighty God, the one who can do all things, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. The one for whom nothing, nothing can be too hard. Let all my dreams, Lord, past, present, and future, be completely fulfilled to the glory of your holy name. Enkramonko ronde ke sheke remoko tunde ke remaka shatunde remoko tunda. Eke ke ke romoko rondre mahoko shinde. Enkramonko tundra mama hike ke romoko shinde ke. Ma ke ke kendra moko ronde moko sheke remoko tunda. Oh, thank you, my Father, my God. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Let all my dreams be fulfilled, Lord. Oh, let them be fulfilled magnificently. Even above all I can think or ask for, do them, Lord. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And so, my Father, my God, the one who can give dreams to Joseph and bring even the seemingly impossible to pass. I thank you on behalf of every one of us for this very, very special Holy Communion service. Please, Lord God Almighty, our dream of complete divine health Grant to us tonight. Amen. And then all other beautiful dreams, Lord God Almighty, particularly dreams of doing mighty things for you, our dreams of the past, present, and future, bring them all to pass. Amen. And we will bless your name forever. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We bring greetings from the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Redeemed Christian Church of God in Kinshasa. I would like to say that in French. Bonsoir, bonjour, que Dieu vous bénisse. We want to give an offering tonight to God, our Lord, an offering that will cause the heaven to open in our favor. And such offering must be an offering, number one, that is accepted of God. For instance, in the book of Genesis chapter 3, chapter 4, from verse 3 to verse 5, the Bible reads, And it came to pass in the process of time that Cain brought of the fruits of the ground and offering unto God. 
And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock uh, and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and unto his offering. But unto Cain and his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very rough and his countenance fell. So an offering that God accepts is an offering that will open the heaven. Bible says that the offering of Abel was accepted and the offering of Cain was rejected. I pray tonight that your offering shall be accepted in the name of Jesus. Number two, an offering that will open the heaven must be an offering that is pleasing to God. An offering that touches the heart of God, an offering that moves the heart of God. In Luke chapter 21, from verse 1 to verse 4, Luke 21 from verse 1 to verse 4, Bible says, And Jesus, looking up, and saw people who were giving, casting their gifts in the treasury of God. And among them there was a poor widow who had almost nothing, but she had two mites, and she cast the two mites in the treasurer. And the Bible says that Jesus was moved. And he said that this woman gave all what she had. She gave out of her poverty. And I pray tonight, if we will also give an offering that will touch the heart of God, I believe such an offering will open heaven for us in the name of Jesus. Number four, an, an offering that can cause the heaven to open is an offering that provokes the heart of God. For instance, in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 1 from verse 6 to verse 7, Bible says Solomon offered a thousand burnt offering unto God. And in verse 7, the Bible says, that night the Lord came down and asked him a question, what shall I give thee? I pray tonight that our offering will provoke the heart of God and will cause God to calm down in our situations. And I believe God will also ask somebody the same question, what do you want me to do for you? As we package our offering to give unto the Lord tonight, we will also be receiving ministration from our choir, from the Redeemed Christian Church of God in Kinshasa, that will be ministering unto us. God bless you.
Salamo, 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 Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, we bless you. We thank you because you are a faithful God. We thank you for this opportunity you have given unto us, Lord, to give unto you. We pray that, God, as many as have decided to give unto you, may you bless them. May you prosper them. May you come down in our situations, Lord, to bring about revival, to bring about salvation, breakthrough, healing, and deliverances to the glory of your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, mighty God. To you be all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' glorious name, we are free. As we give our offering, especially for those that are giving online, please follow the instructions that are on the screen. God bless you. What a night and we really thank God for this great opportunity to feast with the Lord Jesus tonight. Um, in the studio with me is the King Benga Omojola to review and tell us what the night is all about. How have you been sir? Oh, thank you very much sir. So what do you have to say about this night? Hmm. Well, I could ac actually preach a sermon on this <laughs> night. Um, it's it's so, it's so great to have witnessed what we have seen tonight. You know, our Father and Lord speaking about dreams, you know, challenging us to dream big. Actually noted that, he said, dream big, he said, dream again. You know, what dreams have you had before that you probably have forgotten or you've forfeited, that we should revisit them. So I believe everyone's spirit should have been stirred up right now. Mine has really been stirred up and I'm, you know, I'm picking up all those dreams again. And I'm certain, in my, I'm, I'm sure in my heart that, you know, whatever I dream about, whatever we dream about, God is able, more than able, you know, to bring it to pass. So it's such a wonderful evening. Um, and again, you know, I, I'm sure you're excited about this yourself, I am. right? Yes, excellent. I am. So what are the areas that you touched on dreaming again? Yes, so he said, I mean, looking at how he even spoke about the disciples, you know, one had never, I'd never looked at the scriptures in that light before. Yeah saying uh, the disciples had always wanted to you know perform miracles and it just never happened you know jesus christ told them you know what all you need to do is believe they believed they said they just to pray he taught them to pray and it still didn't happen until they had a great meal with him and then the holy spirit came upon them and they began to do to perform mighty miracles thankfully we also have access to the holy spirit as children of light and it means that even and he has said anyway that greater works even we will yet do. Mm -hmm. So I'm confident in my spirit that from now onward, greater works indeed will continue to perform. Amen. So what greater dreams. works you want to tell them? Yes. You want to lay hands on the sick? Absolutely. I mean, if the disciples were able, Jesus Christ healed the sick, he raised the dead, right? And the disciples even did, the apostles did even greater things. So for us, um, raising the dead should be a starting point. Mm, uh, not I even can the see. I can see. So now. Point. From here, you're just going out there to just start laying hands on the sick and, of I, course, raising the dead. Well, I, I'm sure that wouldn't just be me. I'm sure you'd want to do <laughs> the same as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much, um, the King Benga Modula. It's time for us to go out there. What are those dreams you want to revive again? It's time for you to lay hands on the sick, do the miraculous, walk in the miraculous, and see your dreams come to pass. We thank God for all that he has done for us and really want to say a big thank you for joining us.
now the November 2020 Holy Communion service for the theme, Let There Be Light by 10. But in, in the deep one is dream again. Thank you all for joining us and we pray that the presence of the Lord will never depart from you. Go out there, dream big and dream again. My name is Sabrina Osma. Join us tomorrow for the Holy Ghost service with the theme, dream again. Have a good night rest. God bless you.